I'm gonna be showing you how to set up the Airbnb clone on your computer. Uh, I'm gonna be doing this because there's quite a few moving parts and I haven't tried this video before, so let me know if this video is helpful for you. So I outlined the steps in the readme of this project, so you can also follow along there if you like. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually clone this onto our computer. So I already did that, but you're just gonna wanna run git clone and then the full stack Airbnb clone and then CD into the project. So I'm in there now, and then I just have the uh, code open here. So I've already gone and run Yarn uh, to install everything. You're gonna wanna do Yarn because this is a Yarn workspace over using NPM for this. All right, so when you install all the dependencies for that, I'm expecting you to have a few things installed. The first is Node.js, which I guess you should have if you're able to run Yarn. So you're gonna wanna install this first, PostgreSQL, and also Redis. Now, when you have all those installed, the next thing we're gonna start setting up is the database. So pretty much this whole setup is getting the server up and running. Uh, it uses Postgres for the database, and step number one is to create that database. Um, so you're gonna to, going to go ahead and do create DB, GraphQL, TypeScript, server, boilerplate. Now you can also drop the database if you ever need to kill it by doing that. And the name of the database that you're creating is in the ORM config. So in the ORM config in the root directory, under the name development, you'll see all the details of how to connect to the database and you can change this stuff. So here's the name that I named the database, but you could change this name if you wanted to. So in this case, I'm going to create that, um, but I could change that if I want to. And then here I can see the username and password. So we're gonna have to create a Postgres user. So I'm gonna say psql and go ahead and uh, connect to the database. And now this is something that uh, create database and PC will you get when you install PostgreSQL, by the way. All right, and to create a user, I recommend this Medium article. I'll link it below. Um, and this is what I usually use, these two commands right here. We've already created the database, um, but you just wanna create a user and grant all the permissions. And then the user here and the user here would be Postgres. I've already set that up, so I don't need to run that. I already have this user created. And you can change that if you want to change the username or password right there. And uh, the last step with the database is to also enable a extension. So we're using a uh, UUIDs. So you want to go ahead and copy this and create the this UUID extension if it does not exist. All right, so our database is up and good to go. The other thing you want to get up and running is Redis. I already have Redis going. You can just type Redis CLI to see if you can connect as I'm able to here. And then the only thing we need to do is to CD into packages server. And now we can run yarn start to start up our server. Um, and it starts up good. I could come over here to local storage 3000 for our front end, which we haven't started yet, or localhost 4000. Um, and here, you should probably just see a blank screen if this is your first time opening this up, but this is GraphQL Playground. So this allows you to run GraphQL commands and I can see all the queries and mutations I can run. Probably the first one you're gonna to wanna to run is to register a user. You can give it whatever email, whatever password you want because this is just gonna be sent to a test server, uh, the email, um, and you'll see that here. Now, it sometimes takes a little bit to actually fire off, but if you go back to the, your console, you should see in a little bit um, the email come in and you can actually click on that link if you want to. All right, so the next thing is to just get the front end working, which actually takes nothing else that you need to do. We're just gonna have to go into packages controller and build that. Um, the common folder actually gets automatically built whenever we install. So now I can go into the website and just do yarn start and uh, it should start no problem. Um, it looks like I already have this uh, up on another port, so I'm just gonna say yes. Um, oh, that's another thing that uh, I forgot to mention. So if you get an error on your server about um, having an issue with the environment variables, you wanna go ahead and create a .env file. So .env.example tells you what you need to put in it, but so in your uh, package, your server folder here, create a file called .env, and inside of that, you're gonna say front end host, and here we're gonna say localhost 3000. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be running at here. 
Now I have mine up at 3001, so I'd want to change that to 3001. Um, but usually you want to have it at well close 3000 because that's what you're going to be running at by default. I just have this open in another window, so that's why it's uh, not letting me start it there. But anyway, that's how you start up both the website and both the server. Um, and we can also see if we got the email. Here we go. Now we can click on this email and it'll take us to our front end if we want to. Um, I, I guess we're just saying hello to ourselves right here. I think we should have sent a uh, a link that you can click on. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But that's how you set up this project. Um, you can check out the code, change what's sent in the email if you want to, and all that fun stuff.